In summer, the sardines are a long way out to sea. The birds fly hundreds of miles in search of a meal. Once they've sighted their target, they plunge from heights of 30 meters. Striking the water at 100 kilometers per hour. Every dive subjects them to enormous forces. The slightest miscalculation could be fatal. Gannets dive no deeper than 10 meters, so once again, they rely on the dolphins to keep their prey near the surface. But with so much traffic, there's always the danger of a collision. This one has broken her neck. Her death will mean that back on the colony, her chick will probably starve. Back at the water's edge, some of the gentoos are bringing pebbles ashore from the seabed. There are no trees on Antarctica, so instead of using twigs or leaves to build nests, these penguins make theirs from small stones. Picking out the best one and carrying it all the way to the nest site is the penguin equivalent of giving a loved one a box of chocolates. During the summer months, Port Lockroy is under almost 24-hour daylight, and the sea ice is finally starting to break up. Outside the post office, the couple under the Union Jack are busy building up their nest. Behind the boat shed, this pair of penguins is well ahead of the game. They've lucked out and have found an old nest, already free of snow. Over the past week, they've been adding new stones, piling them one on top of the other, to create good drainage from snow and rain. A dry nest is essential if these birds are to have any success in raising young. are fiercely protective of their pile of stones and because nests are so tightly packed together in the colony neighborly disputes constantly break out and a nest left unattended for more than a few seconds is in danger of being stolen the adults focus is now set on a ruthless competition to mate. A male bids to enter a herd with females in season. He uses dust to accentuate all his size and power. Another male already established in the herd answers the display. A 
and waits. The newcomer responds by scent marking and moving even closer. This challenge cannot be tolerated. resident male has won. Having seen off his rival, next summer's calves will likely be his. It's early June, and around some old abandoned buildings on their land, Francisco and his wife Teresa have come to check on the current residents. The barn swallows have been here since March, but there's a much larger bird that comes to nest in the church almost every year. In a small window hole, barn owl chicks about seven weeks old are close to fledging. They nest sometimes here, and they also do it on the other side. But this year they want to have a better view of <laughs> of the lake. Barn owls, along with five other owl species, breed very successfully in the Montado. It's a sure indication of the plentiful rodent prey, including Cabrera's vole, that can be found here. A declining population in the countryside does at least have a bonus for the local swallows. The abandoned priest's house has provided some perfect nest sites. Each young swallow eats about 150,000 insects before leaving the nest. Insects are so abundant in the Montado that a pair of Portuguese swallows regularly rears three broods each season, rather than the two more typical in Britain. Kenya, famous for its big cats, the supreme hunters. Cheetahs specialize in hunting at speed. Though fast, they're fragile creatures built to sprint after small prey. They don't have the strength or weight of a lion to bring down larger animals. This male is different. He doesn't hunt alone. He's learnt that there is strength in numbers. But here, there are not just two, but three cheetahs, a band of brothers. They have changed their tactics, and by doing so, have taken their prey by surprise. They have learned that working together, they can bring down large prey. An ostrich, a bird that towers over a cheetah and is more than twice as heavy. It can't fly to escape danger, but it can lash out with a deadly kick. A female, unaware as yet of any danger.
Even with three of them, this is still highly risky. If one gets injured, the other two couldn't hope to tackle such large prey. On the other hand, if they get it right, the rewards are huge. The male has spotted one of the brothers, but only one. It's not too worried. Then suddenly, there are three. The female is slower to realize the danger, and the cheetahs switch targets. takes the combined effort and weight of all three brothers to bring down this powerful bird. Even now, the ostrich could land a fatal kick. So far, the brothers are winning. Ostriches have yet to find a way to foil such tricks. There is no other species on the planet that responds as quickly and as dramatically to the good times as the desert locust. Eggs that have remained in the ground for 20 years begin to hatch. The young locusts are known as hoppers, for at this stage they're flightless. They find new feeding grounds by following the smell of sprouting grass. Normally, it takes four weeks for hoppers to become adults. But when the conditions are right, as now, their development switches to the fast track. As the vegetation in one place begins to run out, the winged adults release pheromones, scent messages, which tell others in the group that they must move on. And when groups merge, they form a swarm. locust eats its entire body weight every day, and a whole swarm can consume literally hundreds of tons of vegetation. They have to keep on moving. The swarm travels with the wind. It's the most energy-saving way of flying. Following the flow of wind means that they're always heading toward areas of low pressure places where wind meets rain and vegetation starts to grow. As they fly, swarms join up with other swarms to form gigantic plagues several billion strong and as much as 40 miles wide. They will consume every edible thing that lies in their path.
This is one of planet Earth's greatest spectacles. It's rarely seen on this scale, and it won't last long. Once the food has gone, the steady roar of a billion beating locust wings will once again be replaced by nothing more than the sound of the desert wind. This is going to be the end of the road for a lot of salmon. These bears are really hungry. They haven't tasted salmon for 10 months, and the big males battle for the best fishing spots. The longer the salmon take over their journey upstream, the weaker they become. And these falls present them with their biggest challenge yet. Although the falls aren't very tall, the bears hold the high ground. The salmon make short, exploratory leaps to see where the bears are. they don't always get it right. This mother bear has been waiting months for this moment. Competition is fierce for these first salmon, even between a mother and her own cubs. More and more fish arrive at the foot of the falls. Eventually, they have to go for it, regardless of the danger. But numbers are on their side. For every salmon that gets caught, hundreds make it past the bears. A lesser Jaboa. Hunter needs super senses to find such small, sparse prey. The Rupal's desert fox has ears 20 times more sensitive than our own. The Jaboa tries to hide, but the hole's not deep enough. The fox's sensitive nose tells him exactly where to dig. There's a sneaky back door. If he can squeeze through. Time for the Jaboa to reveal his own secret weapon. Legs like a kangaroo. The Jaboa can hop more than 10 times its own body length. But long legs don't make it easy to hide. They come into their own 
when the only option left is to run for it. Sometimes getting over is tough. Better to go under. The Jaboa's quick, but the fox is quicker. The Jaboa's only hope is to outmaneuver, and he has one last trick up his sleeve. Hairy feet. A shock of hair on the sole of his feet grips the sand for a quick turn. Desert survival requires sensible footwear. Tonight, the desert fox goes hungry. <laughs> 